Am I the asshole for setting the record straight about my boyfriend's birthday party antics? Posted by Connect Astronomer. I, 21 female, recently found myself in a situation where my boyfriend's, 22 male, friends, insisted that I foot the bill for his birthday party under the pretense that he had generously covered mine. Little did his friends know, he not only failed to contribute to my celebration, but also made me pay him back for a bottle of whiskey that he had gifted me, all while consuming half of it in front of everyone. Recently, my boyfriend celebrated his birthday, and when his friends insisted that I contribute to covering the expenses, since he supposedly paid for mine, I felt compelled to set the record straight. While I appreciate the gesture of him throwing a party for me on my birthday, the reality is that he didn't contribute financially to the event. Instead, I ended up covering the costs, which left me feeling a bit deceived given the expectations set by his friends. The situation took an even more uncomfortable turn when he presented me with a whiskey bottle as a gift during my birthday party. What seemed like a thoughtful gesture quickly turned into a bizarre turn of events when he later asked me to pay him back for the gift. To add insult to injury, he openly consumed half of the gifted whiskey in front of everyone while not even offering me a single drink of it. Now faced with the assumption that my boyfriend had generously paid for my celebration, his friends are expecting me to reciprocate the favor for his birthday party. I'm torn between going along with the misconception to keep the peace or revealing the truth about what transpired during my own celebration. So, am I the asshole for considering exposing the reality of my boyfriend's actions regarding my birthday party's expenses and the gift? In the comments, Admirable Avocado says, not the asshole. Does your boyfriend even like you? OP says, Makes me wonder, cause every time we're out, I'm expected to pay more than 70%, even if we get a room for rent for a couple of hours, which doesn't exactly cost a lot, but it's about the contribution. Are you sure your boyfriend isn't using you for money? And OP says, I've began to feel that he is using me for money and sex, because every time we screw and are done, he asks me to pay and makes a joke about how he's a gigolo or something, and that he deserves to be paid for his service, though I never even thought of something like this before. You don't have a boyfriend. You have a leech. Do you really want to be with this leech for the rest of your life? Imagine having children with him. Oh my god, he couldn't even be bothered to throw you a birthday or get you a gift. Get him the gift of being single, and please find your self-respect and find someone who is actually a partner. OP says, I absolutely do not want that. I feel like the only reason I kept my eyes closed is because he is my first boyfriend after so much happened, and he used to protect me. But this gave me a whole new perspective. I don't know if it's helpful or not, but we've known each other for more than 8 years and have been dating for 2 and it's the first time that we had to celebrate my birthday together. For his birthday last year, as per his request, I got us a hotel room in the Marriott, where he first spent some time with me, and then asked me to leave after he was done, so his friends could come in after I left, and they could party for the rest of the night and the next day. Wow, why are you with this guy again? He treats you like an old towel. Why are you okay with this? OP says... He was there for me when my ex spread my nudes at school and spread rumors of how I effed his friends and cheated just because I said no to having sex with him. This guy physically fought him and called his parents to sort the matter out and supported me through all of that. Maybe I'm just grateful or feel safe with him. Well, maybe he stood up for you back then, OP, but now he's not doing that. The fact that he kicked you out of the hotel room that you guys were supposed to spend together so that he could party with his friends after he was done having sex with you is just insane, is it not? Please have some self-respect for yourself, OP, and some decency to leave this guy because just accepting that he's doing these things to you and blatantly disrespecting you in front of your face, in front of all of your friends, it's got to be so humiliating. The best thing you could have done would be leave him yesterday. And the best thing you can do now is to leave him now, OP. He doesn't deserve you. Update. Hello again, Reddit. I wanted to provide an update on my previous post and share the recent developments in my relationship. After much contemplation and advice by everyone here, I decided to have an honest conversation with my boyfriend about the misconceptions surrounding our birthday celebrations. 
I calmly explained that, while I appreciated the effort that he put into throwing me a party, the financial burden had fallen entirely on my shoulders, contrary to what his friends believed. To my surprise, the discussion took an unexpected turn. My boyfriend not only admitted to his lack of financial contribution, but also revealed a more troubling behavior. He confessed to showing private pictures of us and me, which he secretly took to his friends, without my consent, a violation of my trust and privacy. What followed was an even more distressing revelation. His friends, upon learning about the situation, made inappropriate and disrespectful suggestions, implying that I offer certain favors to them by entertaining them instead of contributing financially to my boyfriend's birthday party. Feeling disgusted by their behavior and betrayed by my boyfriend, I took matters into my own hands. I discreetly recorded the inappropriate conversations and confronted my now ex-boyfriend about it. When he failed to show remorse, I decided to share the recordings with his friend's girlfriends, exposing their disrespectful comments. Additionally, I reached out to his mum and shared the troubling aspects of our relationship, hoping that she could offer some guidance or intervention. It was a difficult decision, but I felt that it was essential to bring these issues to light. As a result, I've officially ended the relationship and distanced myself from those toxic individuals. Thank you all for the support and advice in my previous post, and for making me realize what I have failed to see. In the comments, Huge Asparagus says, Congratulations. Also, don't shoulder this as your fault or something that you should have known. You were 100% betrayed by someone who was a wolf in sheep's clothing. You learn and move on, remembering that a partner needs to respect and value you. If you feel that they aren't living up to your needs, talk it out and leave if they can't or refuse to change. Good luck. OP says, Thank you. I have indeed learnt my lesson, and though it hurts a lot right now, I know I saved myself in the long run. I would consider after his birthday antics last year by getting a hotel room and asking her to leave would be the death of the relationship right there. Then to do something similar to her birthday in asking her to pay for her gift, well, that's just some more douchery of the same type. Sounds like she was taught to put up with crap behavior by her parents and is struggling to give herself the validation and support that she needs. I hope she gets some help for herself before she finds another one, as I'm sure that there are plenty of crap boyfriends out there. Is it her parents or the whole damn society? There are still so many places in the world where being a single woman is the worst thing ever. Like, I would never, but I've met a lot of women who think, but he doesn't beat me, means he's a good guy. The bar is currently a tripping hazard in hell. I think part of the problem with the, but he doesn't beat me thing, is for so many years, the only type of abuse that we, women, maybe society as a whole, heard about was physical abuse. I feel like only in the past decade we've started to really identify and dig into emotional, verbal, financial, and all the others. Plus, physical abuse is easy to identify, there is a clear action to define it, but the others, not so much. Our next post is by user cworthinessown 9590 titled, Am I the asshole for making my husband and children prove they can take care of a dog without my help? Before we got married and had kids, my husband and I agreed that all big decisions required two yes or no votes. Well, our two oldest kids and my husband want a dog. I do not. I have heard too many horror stories about a family getting a pet and then the person who did not want it being stuck caring for it. I finally agreed on three conditions. 1. Smaller than 60 pounds. We do not need a mastiff. 2. A non-shedding dog only. None of us are allergic, I just don't want extra work. And 3. For 60 days in a row, they had to collect all the garbage from all the trash cans in the house and put it in the big garbage bin. That was to make sure that they would remember to feed a dog every day. And for 60 days, they, all three of them, had to go for a one-mile walk twice a day, with a GPS route tracker active. If they missed a day, they had to start over. The longest they've made it so far is two weeks. My parents called me up to say that I was being ridiculous and petty. I 100% agreed with them. But since they always side with the kids, I was ready for them. I sent them a link for a dog walking service in my area. It is very reasonable. 
I said if they wanted a say in the dog decision, they had to agree to set up an account with that company, and I could call up the company for help whenever their precious, perfect grandchildren and son-in-law forgot to take care of the dog. They said I was being a jerk, and that they had the right to their opinion. I agreed that they had that, but unless they were willing to pay to include their opinion in the decision, it did not matter. My husband has finally seen that the kids are not responsible enough to have a dog. Great. He said we needed to tell them. I said that we was one too many people. I wasn't the one who sided with them when I had said that I knew that they were not ready. He thinks I'm being a dick. No one's called me an asshole, but that's only because they say it in much more polite terms. In the comments, SecretJealous4342 says, Not the asshole. Am I the asshole is literally full of posts about people taking care of pets that they didn't want. Dogs are a long-term commitment. Has your husband taken into account that your kids will be in school, extracurriculars, dating, etc.? Depending on how old your kids are, they may even move out. Who will be taking care of the dog then? OP says, I know. I usually comment in this sub using my main account, but I was afraid of being downvoted into oblivion by dog lovers. There's no way you would be. True dog lovers want the dogs to be happy, comfortable, and cared for. The fact that the people who want the dog are not willing to step up and take care of the dog is the problem. You don't have a dog because you don't want a dog, and that's completely fine. You also don't want to be sandbagged either, which is even more fine. Not the asshole. This was brilliant planning. And OP says, not gonna lie, I got so many ideas from reading this sub. Thank you so much for posting this. I fight with myself daily to not get a dog. I'm actually trying to get up to walking a mile a day, but then you said that I need two miles a day. You just pushed the goalpost before I made it halfway. Not the asshole. Even though every step along the way was pushing the fuzzy border of assholedom, I'm giving you not the asshole clearance on this. Most people don't understand the responsibility required to own a dog. Many dogs are neglected and mistreated because of it, and often the responsibility for preventing those things from happening falls on the most responsible member of the household, which sounds like you. One thing I'll add to this is give them another chance. People can learn discipline and change. OP says, they can try for 60 days as many times as they want. Honestly, I'm in agreement with that one. I think not the asshole here as well. I've been around animals my whole life. I know firsthand how hard it is to look after them and how much of a commitment it takes. This family has obviously shown time and time again that they're not ready for that commitment, that they will not give proper care to this dog. I'm so on board with OP stopping them until they reach that 60 day mark because it's kind of pathetic that, hey, you know, we're just gonna lie to you. Uh, yeah, responsibility is gonna fall all on you, but we're gonna pretend and get mad at you until then. They can all pout and pose about it as much as they want to, but until they can prove that they are able to look after this dog just as much, it's not happening. Not the asshole. Update. They did it. It took them almost a year, but they managed to follow all the rules for two months. We have found an acceptable dog at a rescue, and we are bringing him home tomorrow. My kids are stoked to get a pup for Christmas. My husband has lost a bunch of weight from his daily walks, and I have too since I joined in on most walks. Thanks everyone for your comments and opinions. I held strong, and they came through. In the comments, Stefan Allen 1977 says, Wow, a couple doing something in an adult matter and following through, eventually, to earn their reward. What a great way to teach them responsibility without coming off as the bad guy. Not the normal am I the asshole fodder, for sure. Have to love OP pulling the classic, you want to order me around my house like it's your home? Well then, pay up like it's your home, on her own parents. Grandparents want their grandkids to have a dog, but have the audacity to want OP to do all the work. Then grandparents slash OP's parents should at least pay for dog walking services for said grandkids. OP is not wrong to do that. And this is how you set boundaries and hold others accountable when they're being immature and ridiculous. I think OP did a great job. I'm hoping that she's also holding folks accountable for their language towards her. Her parents calling her a petty jerk and her husband calling her a dick because she doesn't want to do what they want is pretty obnoxious. 
Quote, I have heard too many horror stories about a family getting a pet and then the person who didn't want it being stuck caring for it. If this isn't the damn truth, my ex always has to have no less than two cats on hand. I'm meh about cats because of shedding and the annoying shit they get into around the house, but I absolutely hate dealing with the litter box. I told her before we moved in together that I wouldn't be responsible for it. Who do you think was primarily responsible for the effing litter box and had to deal with it though? It sure wasn't her. And you know what? Good on you OP for that one. Sticking to your guns and pulling through with the family in the end because it's so refreshing to hear healthy change being made in the household as a result of you sticking to your guns. No one had to get hurt, no one's feelings were stomped on besides yours for a long time, but hey, it's not like they really care about that. And it seems like everything is working out in the end, so congratulations to everyone. Our next post is by user Lyrically Me, titled, Am I the asshole, 27 female, for not wanting to share my finals notes with my nursing classmates? Hey all, so I'm in an accelerated nursing program. We're set to graduate actually this week, but I'm not doing too well in my med surge class, and most likely will not be graduating until April if I have to retake this class. Now, basically for the entire year, there are a few classmates of mine, one in particular, who always asked me to send her my notes for some of our classes to study before an exam. I take a lot of time creating these notes, reading the textbook, watching videos, rescinding the professor's lectures, and at first I did not mind sending. Until I realized that the majority of the classmates had my notes. The one girl I sent my notes to was sending them to other people. Before our last exam, I looked over at my classmate who I did not send my notes to, and she had my notes printed out, studying from them before the exam. I didn't mind sharing my notes because I felt as if we were all working together to pass. That is until I started failing med surge. I guess that there were tips and tricks and resources online that the class had found and were not sharing with everyone. So I feel bad in a way because I feel like I've been helping so many people and I've asked for help but haven't received it. No one owes me anything and I understand why people don't like to share the resources they have because they might get into trouble or they worry that the professor might find and change the exam, but I feel bitter now. We have a final tomorrow and several people have been asking me to send them my notes for our pediatric final. I just don't want to send them because I feel like I've been helping you all year and when I needed help, no one responded. People have literally told me they're only passing the class because of my notes. Am I the asshole for not sharing my notes for the final? In the comments, Llama No Drama says, Not the asshole. Nobody is entitled to your notes, and if there are resources that aren't being shared, then there's no benefit to you. Good luck on your exams. Why should you send them your notes? You asked for help and they didn't help you, so don't help them. That's on them. If they helped you, then you would have helped them. It seems to me that they're taking advantage. Been there and absolutely not the asshole. You've been very generous. The classmates you share your notes with have no right to share those notes with others. It's a very crappy thing to do because it's not their hard work to just give away. For this reason alone, I wouldn't share anymore. It would be one thing if you shared your notes with a person and they reciprocated with other resources they heard about or used throughout your coursework, but if you're getting nothing out of this, don't get into the habit of sharing. Once in a while is fine, especially if they had a tragedy in their life or something, but don't feel bad. I assure you they have their own notes and resources that they don't share, but want to use your notes to make sure that they have the extra that you picked up on. Update. Hey all, so I believe that it was yesterday that I posted on this group about how I'm currently failing my Med Surge 2 class, which I still am, <laughs> lol. Our final for that class isn't until Thursday. There are a couple of girls who usually rely on me to send them notes for our classes before exams, and I never had an issue until I realized that my notes were being sent to people that I didn't send them to. Still, this didn't bother me until I reached out looking for help pertaining to our med surge class because everyone is passing except for me. When I reached out, I got very broad responses as to how they are studying and what resources they're using to get good grades. I decided to not share my notes this time around before our pediatrics final. 
It seems as if people were not reading or even studying for the class. They were only relying on my notes. We took our pediatrics final today, and I got a 96. The group of girls who usually use my notes to study failed, and three of them even got caught cheating using ChatGPT and are now being removed from the program. Mind you, we only have two more days until the semester is over, and we're supposed to be getting pinned for graduation. This final was worth 30% of our grade, and a few of them were already sitting at around 77%. Failing brought them down below a 75, which is passing for my program. I kind of feel bad because I knew that they relied on my notes, but I also don't feel bad because I asked for help and no one helped me. Am I the asshole for not giving them my notes? I feel like I let them fail. In the comments, Gordo says, Not the asshole. I'd prefer nursing care by someone who actually earned it, not someone who cheated their way through. Yes. The first thing I thought is, can you imagine a medical professional treating you and it turns out that they were too lazy and stupid to pass their classes and had to cheat or relied on others' work to get them through school? It sounds like a punchline in a bad sitcom. It actually explains some of my awful healthcare experiences. Not the asshole. You're not responsible for other people's passing or failing their classes. You're not responsible for other people's academic work or lack thereof. You reap what you sow. They relied on your notes, but weren't there when you needed help. You owe them nothing. Reciprocity matters. You shared your notes generously, but when you needed help, they weren't there. Prioritize your success. You owe them nothing. The reason that they were all passing while you were doing poorly in comparison is because they were all cheating the whole time. They probably didn't want to help you because they assume that you have higher ethical standards and are actually trying to learn. Exactly. That's why they were so broad about the resources, because they were cheating, not studying. Nursing school is not easy, but those that cheat will not pass the NCLEX because you cannot cheat on that. Plus, it's a moral issue. You need all that information to properly care for people. But then again, there was a huge scandal at my school. Nursing students were trading nudes for grades. And that's where I'm going to leave today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.